Hey everybody, my name's Annie Sauter. I'm an actor, but I'm also what I like to refer to as a full-time part-timer, um, which sounds kind of crazy, but I'll explain. Um, you see, when you have a lot of jobs and when you become this collector of jobs, you also become a collector of things. Uh, I've brought a little show and tell because like, who doesn't like props, you know? Um, <laughs> here are some things, uh, this is like my home office, this bag. <laughs> These are all the things that I need to carry with me every single day. And also because, uh, personally, I don't, I don't have my own residence at the moment. I am traveling back and forth between my friends' houses in the city and also my gracious family who lives in the suburbs. So um, any given day, this is what I have on me. I have some um, bread shapers because I'm a professional baker. I bake for like Michelin star restaurants and stuff. So sometimes I get part-time gigs. I'm never, I don't know when I'm going to need these. I've got um, sheet pans, you know, more of the same. I actually didn't look in this bag before I got here, so um, could be a bag of surprises. Um, what else? I got pants. You don't care about pants, right? You don't need to see them. I have headshots for acting and auditions. And also scrubs because I work at a hospital. So that's just um, an idea of the menagerie of things I'm kind of up to right now in my life. And also there's that big giant garbage bag right there, but that's not garbage. Um, I'll get to that in a couple minutes. So why did I decide to show you all this stuff? I bet you're wondering, and that's a great question. Diversifying your talents is powerful. It's really, really powerful, but also it's horrifying. So I always struggled in school. That's me. Uh, with a mole, <laughs> which is no longer there. Um, it's funny because when people ask me if I ever went through any awkward years, I show them this photo and I'm like, what awkward years? No, I didn't go through any awkward years. Everything was fine. <laughs> so uh, I always struggled and I didn't really consider myself smart because I was always in these remedial math classes. I had teachers who were pretty tough on me, but not in the positive ways. And I didn't really have any friends. I was picked on a lot and I was bullied. Um, so it was a big old struggle, and I could never figure out why. And I realized eventually that the curriculums, the things that I, I was interested in weren't actually being taught to me in school. So I'd get home, and my mom would fix me a snack, and then I'd go upstairs, and I would uh, just invest time into things that I really, really loved, because that was the only way I could kind of educate myself. I wasn't really getting any other help. Um, so after years of struggling, and about six days before I graduated high school, I was presented with a diagnosis of ADHD. And I know that there are probably a bunch of skeptics here in the audience who are, you know, like, no, that's not real. But I am not here today to argue or deny the existence of this diagnosis. I'm just here to tell you that I personally identify with it. Um, and, and because of this diagnosis, it's hurled me into this chaotic life of these multiple different things that bring me insane amounts of joy. But also I'll tell you that my life is completely void of a stable income. So when I talk about this, I'm talking about it today because I know that I'm not alone. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm in a boat with a bunch of other millennials. And as a matter of fact, 34% of the workforce right now is occupied by giggers. And that's actually expected to expand to 43% within the next 20 years. It's projected to be 43% of the entire workplace in this country. So the most frequently asked question, because I think I'm gonna answer some questions you might have for me today, is why don't you get a full-time job? Um, to which I always reply, whoa! <laughs> Great question. I never thought of that. Um, believe it or not, I have. Um, I have thought of getting that job. Um, but the truth is, is that I've never really been able to sit still. And I'm not lazy. I just have all these things that I've wanted to do, and it felt like a waste to kind of sit behind this desk and, and, and do it. And I couldn't do it. And it was really stressing me out. So what happened was, was that my main focus was acting. And I decided... I need to figure out how to supplement this career. I have this incredible agent. She'll send me out on auditions during the day. What am I going to do? Well, I knew how to bake. 
So I started to bake professionally. And after I baked, I realized I had incredible experiences with my speech and debate team here at Harper College, actually. So I came back and I decided to coach. I nannied, I picked up a job at a hospital helping doctors and, and nurses with their materials, so I'm a materials handler. Um, and I just decided, you know, I, I can keep myself occupied, I can keep myself going here with this stuff. But the reality is, is that you go to these auditions and then you leave. And more often than not, you're not making progress. More often than not, you're not gonna book the gig. And that can be pretty detrimental. Even the most seasoned actors experience this. So I don't feel ashamed about talking about it because it's very real for all of us. And a lot of people ask me, okay, well, what's it like? Like, it must be really glamorous going to these auditions and, and getting to perform. And to be honest, it's become one of those things where it's like, okay, um, I don't really get to act all the time, so I'm gonna take these 30 seconds to 10 minutes I get in this audition room to really get the opportunity to act. Like, this is exciting for me. So, mostly it's commercial stuff, though, that I'm being called in for at this juncture in my life. And uh, it, it sounds kind of simple, I guess, but it's not. Like, they expect you to do something called a commercial slate. So what happens is you go into this room, and you sit down, and then you wait for your name to be called, uh, and then the casting director calls you in and says, uh, okay, uh, give me your name. And sometimes you state like which agency you're with, so you'd be like, hi, my name is Annie Sauter, and for example, I'm with Shirley Hamilton. And then they take a picture so that they can send that to the other casting directors on the other side. Um, sounds simple, but you're actually thinking about how you, know, you got there. Like maybe your train was late or you spent 20 bucks on a parking spot that you know, you only know you, you're gonna need for 10, 15 minutes while you're in there. You've taken the entire day off of work so you know that you're not making any income that day just to be at this audition for a half hour. So sometimes um, your slates turn out like this. <laughs> so like after a year of some serious thinking, you know, like how am I gonna um, make this better? Because this isn't very good, you know what I mean? Um, I, I did, I figured out the solution, which I think this looks way better, I don't know, it's my opinion. The solution's pretty simple. You just need to think of brownies. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I went through two years of conservatory training <laughs> to figure out that brownies are the key. So if you take anything away here, to, no, I'm just joking. Um, so not being the type of person who can feel this sense of satisfaction by sitting behind a desk, I did realize that I was experiencing this sort of downward spiral because I was constantly focusing on the things I wasn't accomplishing. And that was really hard, and my concern about my welfare was making me almost, dare I say, like more and more self-centered, you know? And there's so much brilliant evidence out there that studies these mechanisms and the mechanics of loneliness and how often people who are the most lonely are the ones who end up focusing on themselves. And so I decided with the days that I had off and with the days that I wasn't gigging, it was time to start helping others. I just kind of panicked one day. I was like, you know what? This is ridiculous. I'm not doing anything. I'm just sitting here waiting for the next gig. This is stupid. And so um, I actually started to raise money uh, to create 36 sandwiches for homeless people around the city of Chicago. So I did this uh, every week for six months. Um, I raised this money, it was, it was great, but it actually was way too much. I've become very good at making sandwiches. Um, fundamental life skill, I guess. But the fact is, is that it was too much for me to handle on my own. So at the hospital I work at, referring back to the scrubs, um, they actually put out this little blurb saying, hey, Annie's gonna go around, she's gonna hand out socks and scarves and all these things. And I had some overwhelming responses, but the coolest part is, is that a local senior center decided to make me these care packages to hand out. Uh, there's a big hole in the bag because when I'm reaching in my back seat to grab the packages, I just tear into it like a bear. Um, but they're pretty phenomenal. They've got uh, deodorant and a granola bar and some socks and some gloves and just fundamental things to get people through the next couple days. These really mean a lot to me. We're referring back to when I was a kid. Let's just flash back to that for a second. I got bullied a lot. I got bullied a whole bunch. And I remember 
watching plays and watching television shows and just thinking to myself that I felt like these characters could be my friends. And when I started playing characters, I remember feeling as though I was giving a voice maybe to someone who couldn't speak on behalf of themselves. And I felt as though I was introducing my audience to somebody who perhaps they'd never ever get to meet in real life. So even though I'm not booking as many gigs as I want, or I'm not playing the characters that I always want to play because of how inconsistent this industry is, I've realized that I don't need that as a medium to touch lives. I'm not doing a huge thing here. This isn't a major, ginormous thing. But if I'm on my way to an audition, if I see somebody, or if I'm leaving, and if I decide to give something to somebody, it just, it makes me feel like I'm doing anything, even if it's not the medium in which I want. And so I know that there's this huge gap between people who, who want to help and actually doing it. And I get that, and I've seen it, and it's hard. But I'm here today really to tell you that my pride and joy as a gigger has become giving back. And I think the thing is, is that for a while I thought, okay, well, this career ADD is so terrible, but the truth is, is that all these jobs make up fragments of who I am. And so when I think about giving back, it just, it's become one of my jobs. So I don't know if I can stand here today and encourage you all to try to make the world better, and I don't know how well I'm doing, but I just want to encourage you to do something. Thank you so much. Thank you.